and we're back. All right, guys. Uh, good news. Still have my job. Right now, we're out in front of the office of the chief of police, and we are going to do, as promised, episode two of Nothing Off the Table. Um, got a lot of comments about how I looked nervous last time around, and, uh, you know, it's a little intimidating sitting in there with the chief and asking him questions. This time around, I'm going to get my confidence back. I'm going to go in there walking tall, and I'm going to ask those questions, and nobody can stop me. I'm going to tell the chief how I really feel that I'm not going to be intimidated by him and how I'm going to do this interview and there will be no intimidation factor involved. <sighs> chief! Just give me a second. I got to get something off my chest. <sighs> the last interview we did, uh, you were a little intimidating. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was sitting on the edge of the chair like a little schoolboy in the principal's office. And uh, this time around, I think I'm going to take a little bit more control. This is going to be my day. I know you got the four stars, but it's gonna be my interview, okay? What'd you guys think I was really talking to the chief? No way, that's the chief of police. I like my job too much to have that much confidence. Sir, how's Good it going? Morning, man. Good, right. sorry if I kept you waiting. Sorry guys. No problem, no Let problem. Let me know. Um, we are ready to rock and roll, sir. Uh, What's up? All right, send the camera up now. I got a couple other things out. Okay, so we're back, chief. Back. First and foremost, I've checked my mailbox every day, and I just want to thank you. No pink slips. Today, you're still good. All right. Okay, well, let's see how that's going to work out. So let's just get right into it. Recently, there's been some rumor of a program, of a project that's coming. Uh, it's called CLEAR. Can you expand a little bit on the CLEAR program that is going to be coming to the Miami Police Department? Yeah, the CLEAR program is something that we're trying here. Uh, it, it's not like a program that existed somewhere else and we're adopting. This is something that we came up with here. And the idea is that we want to have a different vehicle, a different tool for the officers to have with someone that is an addict. So, And we're going to start it in Overtown. The PST guys will be trained. The idea is that if you have a use amount of opioid, uh, you have the ability to either A, take that person to jail, because that's against the law, obviously, or B, offer them treatment. If they choose treatment, the, the catch is, and I don't really like to use that term, but it's the reality, is they have to sign a binding agreement that says that they understand that because they're an addict, they really don't have the ability to think for themselves and make proper decisions. What that gives us is they go to, to uh, treatment, um, at that treatment, by the way, this is us, UM, and uh, Jackson Health Behavioral. Um, and what they do there is they'll, they'll treat that person. Uh, they'll treat them for their addiction. They'll give them meds. Um, some of the meds could be, for example, there's injectables that fights the urge for potentially up to 28 days for you to have to shoot up, for example. Uh, they'll treat you if you have hepatitis. Now you're getting treatment for hepatitis. Now you're getting treatment if you have AIDS. And so we're kind of doing our part to help the spread of disease as well. So it's like uh, public health and public safety coming together. And Nick, the idea is that, um, you know, sometimes we arrest someone and we're not done with the paperwork and they're out. And so that we got to try something different. And we're hoping that we're able to save some lives. Um, there is no sympathy for the seller. This is solely if it's a use amount, someone who's an addict. And as you probably know, there are people that become addicted to opioids because of circumstances outside their control. Families are destroyed, and we got to try something else. To make it clear, so if I stop somebody and mm -hmm. they have and the, the sole um, reason for them that they might go to jail is because they have possession of heroin, uh, then they have the officer has the ability to you know ask them to be a part of this program. Yeah, it's almost like a little instant intervention. Okay. Hey, man, you know. Would you like to, you know, clean up your life? Because we can offer you something. Right. And uh, and and by the way, listen, we're hoping that that this works because we could potentially save some lives and we can be more effective in how we police. And if it doesn't work, then we scrap it. You know, we're not married to anything here. But if we can do something different and even be an example for other agencies, man, that would be great. And at least we can say that we're trying, not just take them in jail because they come right back out as a reality. So, Chief, just to clarify. Um, we stop somebody who's breaking into a vehicle and has a they needle jail. of heroin in their pocket. They go to jail. And, okay, so there's nothing um, that, that, that they can say, no, I, I know I was breaking into the vehicle, but I want to opt into the program. No. No, you're committing a crime. You're committing a crime. They go to jail. Yeah. And if they're in the program already and they commit a crime, they go to jail. All right, well, there it goes. Yeah, listen, the idea here is that you have someone 
who is an addict and essentially can't help themselves. Okay. We want to find a way to help that person, not just because it's good for them and their family, but this is hopefully one less person breaking into a car, stealing an iPad so they can get their fix or robbing somebody so they can get their fix. We, you know, we got to find a different way because just sticking them in jail isn't working. And so we're hoping this is a vehicle for that. All right, so first one, we'll stick with the programs, usually three and then that one uh, random question. Okay. Moving on to the second topic, um, Edgewater. Yes. Uh, it's currently, well not currently, but it was before prior, a part of Wynwood. And now we made a new net area. So yes. can you elaborate a little bit on the um, thoughts behind that and how that came about? Yeah, this is us wanting to be you know, proactive about how we offer services. So everybody knows you know, Wynwood every day grows more and more. Yes. And Edgewater continues to grow as well. There's more high rises, there's more residents. And, and honestly, it's a little unfair to have a police officer in Wynwood that you've got a police in a different way on Northwest Fifth Avenue and 29th Street, for example, get dispatched to a high rise uh, east of the boulevard. The time to get there, go up, handle the call, come down, come back to Wynwood, it's not realistic. And so we've been pushing the administration to allow us to grow and, and add another net, and they finally agreed. And so it'll be in steps, you know, um, we have a commander now, a sergeant, a PST, some beats, NROs that are already providing, you know, services. And then little by little, we'll add one shift and then another and another until it's a fully staffed net area. And that's gonna help the folks in Wynwood. It's gonna help the folks in Edgewater. And obviously it's gonna help our policemen that we're not putting an unfair expectation on them. So I guess you, you pretty much covered everything. Um, there is a cover about it right now. So I got no follow-ups for you. That's awesome, I like no follow-ups. That was good. All right, third one, the Chiefs Gala. This is a big event. I was there last year at the Chiefs Gala last year. Uh, you did it to benefit police athletic league. So all the proceeds went to the police athletic league program. This year, who's gonna be the beneficiary? And then I want you to elaborate a little bit on what the night is gonna entail, because I know this is your thing, this is your shindig. Man, it's, uh, it's a big deal for me. It's an opportunity to use this platform that I have to raise money. So last year we wanted to expand PAL, the police athletic league, and add a STEM program, add tutoring, at other programs like dance, wrestling, art. Not everybody's an athlete, but that takes money. And it's hard to go to the administration always asking for money. So we raised it ourselves. We raised $200,000. That's We cleared $200,000 last year. That's good. And it was a spectacular event. We had a ball. Uh, this year it's gonna be for Do the Right Thing. So Do the Right Thing is a tremendous program. And you know, you know how it works. It's, we want to encourage good behavior in kids all throughout the county, not just the city. And uh, they've lost some funding, so it's going to be for them. I'm hoping to raise at least as much. We're going to have people there like um, Emilio and Gloria Stefan, for example. We have a lot of local celebrities from yeah. different media outlets. We have other people hoping, uh, hopefully coming yeah. that, uh, that you'll get to see. And I hope to get the same kind of support that people come out and, uh, you know, there's live music, there's food, it's at the Marriott Marquis, so it's a nice venue. Um, is this open? Is this open to anyone? Yeah, so we have different sponsorship, mm -hmm. you know, levels. We'll take help from anybody, whether it's an ad, mm -hmm. whether it's a donation, whether you want to sponsor a table. Uh, there'll be a time that we'll open it up for city employees to pay a little bit less because it's a little expensive. Right. Uh, but again, the idea is to raise money. Really, it's not to have a party, even though it is a party. Right. The idea is it's a fundraiser, 100%. So we'll open it up for employees to pay less and be able to get tickets if they want to come. And if you guys are thinking about attending, we're going to put the links down below. Uh, follow us on our social media platforms where we'll be announcing uh, when the tickets will be available. Yeah, you can call already. You okay. can call already. Is that Ms. Brown? You can call either Jody Atkinson or my wife is the chairman of the committee. Okay. And uh, those numbers will be there. The emails will be there. I'll make sure you get them next so you can. And uh, by the way, I appreciate that you bringing it up as one of the third questions. So, sir, we got to plug it, sir. We got to plug <laughs> I it. I appreciate it. That's man. right. Nothing off the no, table. Man, and, uh, but, you know, that's yeah. nice of you. You could have asked yeah. me something else. No. So I'm grateful. Well, so, it's for a good cause. It's a great cause. Yes. It's awesome. And that's and again, I, I appreciate it because you didn't have to ask me about that. So thank you. So again, I'm going to put all the contact information. If you guys are interested, I'll put it down below in the description so you guys can go and uh, check that out. All right. The random, uh, the random <laughs> question. 
and we've got a lot of there's been a lot of buzz uh, in the comment section about okay. this. All right, and we're just I'm just gonna point it out right now. I'm gonna turn the camera. What's up with the bayonet? Is that a bayonet? Is that a knife? Is that a is that a mail opener? What what is that? So it, it's a knife. Mm -hmm. um, the story is actually so. I think it was like my third day on the force, and we had an inspection. I worked midnights, and I I think it was like the third first week for sure. We had an inspection, and we were lined up, and the lieutenant was coming down person to person, and one of the senior guys handed it to me right before the lieutenant came. And so I'm holding this, and the, of course the lieutenant asked me, what is that? And I said, it's a knife. Well, and he said, okay, great, another joker. No, I'm sorry. He goes, oh, wonderful, another clown, just what we need. <laughs> so, and I've kept it ever since. You know, the good thing is that they didn't ask for it back, and I thought, yeah. well, this is a, a nice knife. Yeah. So I kept it, and, well, now it's uh, almost 30 years that I've had this. Yeah. Well, so sir, that's want, the story. If you want to Another drop, clown. <laughs> if you want to drop by, I have an inspection tomorrow. If you want to drop by. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's it. I appreciate your time uh, answering the questions again, um, clarifying some of that stuff. Yeah, no problem. And I'm looking forward to the next. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Sir, thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank I you. Know you're a busy appreciate man. No, no problem. All right. There it is, guys. Episode two in the books. All right, guys, so I just finished putting together the video last night. Um, I believe the episode went well. Chief agreed to another one. I just have to remember to say this part at the end of the interview. I just keep forgetting to say it. So if you guys have any questions for the chief, put it down below in the comments. We want to open it up to the audience. A lot of you guys asked about the uh, knife on the desk, and there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Make sure you give it a like. Share it with your friends on your timeline and uh, either like this page if you're watching it on Facebook, subscribe to the channel if you're watching it on YouTube, or follow if you're watching us on Instagram or Twitter. All right, guys, see you next episode.